We love to compare the conferences here at Mark Rogers TV. We do it every off season. So what we've done the last two off seasons is take all the Power Five games, all the results from the previous season. We throw them together based on seeding. We put them into context and we let you know who played the best, not necessarily who was the best conference, but very strong indication who played the best on the field. We'll get that series to you very shortly. All right, what we're doing right now, new this offseason, is just matching up the teams in each conference. So I have seeded every conference based on the standings, not based on my own particular opinion. So I think Florida State's better than the two teams above them in the ACC standings, but the Seminoles only went 5-3 and three in the ACC. So Louisville 7-1, and one, Virginia Tech's 6-2. and two. All right, ACC, we've seen them against the Big 12, the Pac-12, and the SEC. Now it's up against the Big 10, the conference most people considered, including myself, to be the best in college football during the regular season. Then bolt play hit, and wow, the ACC looked a lot better than the Big 10. I think we need to temper our uh, opinion just a bit. The Big 10, not as good as we thought early, not as bad as we thought late. Consider the results of the games, not just the record at the end of the line, and consider the competition. The Big Ten certainly played the best competition during bowl season, but the ACC won the games. Okay, let's run them down. Clemson takes on Penn State. Well, we know that Clemson took out Ohio State. Would I expect that game to be 31-0 if they played 10 times? And the reason I'm matching up, if you haven't seen the other videos, 10 times is obviously if some of these matchups are extremely difficult to project who would win one game, well, you get a better context if you think, okay, what if they played 10 times? And maybe I, I feel as though one team is slightly better, but maybe it's a 5-5 matchup, maybe a 6-4 lean versus if they, if they played once, well, a team could be slightly better or they could be a ton better, and that's only reflected in a one-to-zip score. Here we go, 10 games. All right, Clemson, Penn State, the Tigers much more talented. Of course, Penn State uh, in 10 games, they, they steal three. They play home and home. Penn State wins uh, three of these games at 7-3. to three. All right, Louisville, Ohio State. I was tempted to go 8-2 to two based on the way Louisville looked down the stretch. Ohio State, yes, the last game. And I heard a lot of people talk about Ohio State trending down late in the season. They didn't trend down late in the season. They got whipped by Clemson. Okay, the, the game before Ohio State beat was, was the number three team in the country and certainly one of the top five or six teams in the land, Michigan. Ohio State much better than Louisville, but Louisville, very talented, of course, has one of the more dynamic players in college football. It's 7-3. to three. Virginia Tech and Michigan. Yeah, the Hokies impressed me down the stretch. I don't think this is a good matchup. I think Michigan is just, just clearly the better team. They win 7-3. to three. But it's not a blowout. That's that's a competitive series. Maybe Michigan blows them out once or twice. Maybe Virginia Tech uh, as well on the other side. But most of the games are are very entertaining games. Florida State, Wisconsin, talent advantage. We hear this all the time with Wisconsin. They get underrated. They get underevaluated in situations like this. I think a lot of you, I'm guessing, would say Florida State wins seven, maybe eight times against Wisconsin. Let's not overplay the Orange Bowl. Let's not overplay Wisconsin slow-footed. Okay, these teams have matched up in the past. Wisconsin has matched up against the SEC and elite teams in the past. No, they don't win all those games, but they win close to 50% of elite matchup games. They beat LSU this year, and they won games against very talented teams and, uh, and competed against Michigan, Ohio State. Anyway, bottom line, Florida State wins 6-4. to four. Wisconsin would win four times, maybe five. North Carolina decided advantage, just Iowa limited on offense, so it's 6-4, to four, but I believe in the Iowa defense to keep it close. I was leaning 5-5, five to five, but I, I'm going to uh, give the Tar Heels the nod 6-4. to four. Certainly didn't defeat anybody close to, well, they, they defeated uh, North Carolina over Florida State. That was a marquee win, and obviously Iowa over Michigan. All right, Miami, Nebraska, I was leaning 5-5, five, five, but again, I think Miami's a little bit more talented. Nebraska is healthy, so not healthy against Tennessee in the bowl game. Nebraska missing three of its best players, so let's consider that. Everybody's healthy, ready to play. Pitt, Minnesota, of course, we saw Pitt play great against Penn State, great against Clemson, but 
losing to the likes of Northwestern in the uh, Pinstripe Bowl. Minnesota, underregarded, similar to Wisconsin, but think about what Minnesota did this year. Lost four games by one score against some of the best teams in the country. Minnesota beat Washington State, a heavy favorite in a bowl game. I would expect Minnesota to be a clear underdog like Northwestern was in the Pinstripe Bowl, but to win five out of ten games. Georgia Tech Northwestern, this one was difficult for me to sort out. Georgia Tech's record looks shiny at 9-4, and four, but just 4-4 four and four within the conference. Uh, played a fairly weak non-conference slate, uh, defeated Kentucky in the bowl game. Impressive showing by the Yellow Jackets there. I just think it shakes out at 5-5. Five five. Northwestern played uh, generally a more difficult schedule. North Carolina State, Indiana. So 6-4, to four, that may not seem to add up. 7-6 uh, and six team out of maybe a better conference, maybe a better conference. Indiana, 6-7. Uh, and seven. All right, look at Indiana. How well they play the really good teams, the elite teams. Case in point, not an elite team, but a very tough matchup for the Hoosiers in bowl play. So while NC State was playing Vanderbilt, Indiana had to take on Utah. Utah was a couple games away from a Pac-12 championship bid. Indiana missed a field goal or they win the game. They lose 26-24. Hard-fought game. Played Utah to the hilt. Those teams were inseparable in that game. Indiana wins this series against NC State 6-4. Wake Forest and Maryland. Yes, I do not believe in Maryland's uh, ability right now. Nice recruiting class, of course this offseason, but Wake Forest is just a more sound team, and they win that matchup at 6-4. to four. Syracuse, higher seeded than probably they should be. BC's a better team, but Syracuse won the head-to-head -head and had the same conference record, and uh, Syracuse, Illinois, difficult to distinguish here at 5-5. Five to five. BC, Michigan State. UCLA and Michigan State, from a talent standpoint and track record standpoint, the anomalies of this entire series unless I come across somebody else. Michigan State, 1-8 in, in the Big Ten, but we saw them play Michigan. Notre Dame, I know, wasn't great, but Notre Dame's talented. Ohio State, one-point game. Michigan State, man, if they got out there for 10 more games against Boston College, yeah, I, I know that this is not a vintage Michigan State team. There was a reason they went 3-9, and nine, but if they play that schedule tomorrow, they go 6-6 six and six minimum. Michigan State beats Boston College 6-4. Virginia Purdue. Purdue is just pretty anemic across the board, and Virginia was more competitive for the most part, 6-4. Duke and Rutgers, this turned out to be the difference in the entire series. Duke wins it 8-2. Rutgers is just off the map awful. And Duke at least was competitive for half its schedule within the ACC at least. So that was the difference right there. It's a 74-66 matchup between the two. The ACC wins and a six-game difference between Duke and Rutgers. And that was, uh, you know, if you match them up, uh, it's, it's an eight-game difference between the conference. So the ACC wins seven matchups. The Big Ten, four, three ties. I'll give my tie leans to Pitt over Minnesota, Georgia Tech over Northwestern, and... Syracuse over Illinois, slight leans on the 5-5 to series, ACC over the Big Ten, but a very competitive series. How would you match up these games, if they play 10 times, these teams, and would love to hear from you, always do, right here on Mark Rogers TV.